Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the word there is title deed, of things not seen. You have the title deed for it, you don't have to see it. So you can do everything right with one umbrella area and then get infringed upon. You could do something wrong in another area. So with the, with, with the government, they don't want things to be clear because they're trying to hide something. That's why people have taken things in their body that they were told they had to take, but we'll tell you what's in it in 75 years, right? Well, that's a little late for most of us, right? So you have to go to the back of your food and you got to look at the ingredients and you, and you know, you have to become a scientist and a biologist and a chemist because you got to look those words up. And then you look and see what those really are and you're like, well, if I gave that to my kids, I'd go to jail. If I gave that chemical to my, my kids, it's poison. But they can mask it and, well, it's just a small amount. It's like, well, why do you even need it? Why are some things kept from us? I ask questions about the things that nobody wants to talk about because that's probably the things I need to know. Right? So remember, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It's like, yes, that is the most important part of the whole movie. Because things aren't what they seem, right? So when I buy an airplane, I'm asking, well, why are you selling it? And I have somebody that goes through every single log, every single maintenance issue, everything. And, in, and my pilots, they, they actually delivered most of the airplanes that are out there for, for this company. And they, Lou, Lou, where's Lou at? He, he wrote the manuals to the airplanes we fly. So uh, Sven helped develop the simulator for the training for the pilots for the airplane fly. Most of my pilots, all the airplanes we have, they, they delivered them brand new from Brazil. Okay, so they know the airplane. It's like, well, this is a good airplane. Okay, that's the kind of lifestyle you want to have with everything. You want to you want to know people that know exactly what's going on, and you want to have those as friends. So I don't actually, um, to tell you the truth, I don't actually like even uh, buy things or do things without having a a personal reference, someone who uh, has either bought that, ate that, <laughs> you know, flown it. I talk to somebody that like knows the inside scoop, the kind of person you can take to the side and say, hey, tell me what's really going on. Is this a good car? Is this a good airplane? Is this a good restaurant? Is this a good minister? And so I, I check out through relationships, I find out what's really going on. Because if a person appears to be perfect, that's, that's a danger sign. If you think I'm perfect, then that's a danger sign. Because that's how everything is set up for, for somebody to be disappointed, is when we try to portray ourselves as being perfect and knowing it all, and then, and then when things go wrong, and everybody's in the same boat, then we gotta still live with each other. Okay, so I would rather be truthful and ask the right questions, which may not be the ones that you're supposed to ask based on the powers that be. You know, we, we learn the three branches of the government, right? Executive, judicial, and legislative. Okay, but there's a fourth one. It's the CIA. It's the intelligence field. It's the fourth branch. Yeah, see, even the kids are crying. They know. <laughs> All right, so the intelligence fields, they, they took over. And so they control information by keeping information from people, but they also disseminate information that is false. It's a false narrative.
but it's 95% true sometimes. But the 5% will get you off enough to where you never really find out the truth about anything. So you, you know when you go to a museum and you see all those bones, you know, you realize that, the, that at the best, that is 60% clay, maybe 80%. Those bones, those dinosaur bones. Look at, look at you all. This is at the admission of those who work there. So based on what you're seeing, you draw a conclusion and then you go see Jurassic Park. Yeah. But, but based on the narrative of the Bible, we can see that there's a reason why they are not here anymore. They didn't make it on the ark. Once you get hot on the trail and you start to mention certain things, you start to get into a vein of what's really going on, then the, the, the powers that be get very nervous. So what's happening is, is you have in every, every agency, you have a dichotomy. So you have those who are pledged through the Masonic line, they have taken the Masonic pledges and have built themselves up to, their, to the, the levels that they're at. And they have privilege because it's connected to the Illuminati. Okay, so that is Mystery Babylon. Okay, so within any government agency, some individuals I knew because they, weren't, they didn't want to go that way with the, Mas the Masonic line, they were left out. So within the Pentagon, within every agency, you have individuals that have their coin, they have their secret handshake, they have all these oaths, they are in the know. But they are told, this is the way you vote in Congress, this is the way you, you legislate, this is the way you judge. Come on now. They're told, and, and you call them rhinos. But you gotta understand that some of these senators are Mormons which is part of that yes. Masonic line. Yes. So it doesn't matter whether they're red or blue. They vote according to how they're told. So in any situation, if it is, if it is, if it is their will that you disappear, then when you get put in jail, all the cameras get turned off and the guards fall asleep. And you get, you commit suicide without any help. But you had lots of help. It's just not on film. Okay, I know this because I've seen things and then when you go to get the film, the film's gone. Well, who'd got it? Well, these men came. Well, who were they? We don't know. Come on now, y'all looking at me? You, you can, you, you got it, you got, when videos come out, you gotta watch them because they're gonna disappear. You got to watch the people that were in these government projects. They're in their deathbed in the hospital and they're spilling the beans. They're singing like a sailor. And then it, it's gone. Over the years, I've had so many conversations with people that were right there, people that are right there. My dad, they came and threatened us. This thing crashed in our yard. This thing. Today, where that spot is in Roswell, the cows still won't even go near it, that spot. They came and they took this thing away. And this is what really happened. And this is what was in the ground. This is what was on the ground. It's just too much. See, there's too much liability. Too many, too many people get involved. The only way you can control this is to make everything digital so that you can erase it. And not only that, you can change. Like right now, I mean, I mean, you can watch my films. I say stuff, though you'll see it on this film, I say stuff that I didn't even say. But it's my voice. I watch myself say that there wasn't even a flood of Noah. I'm like, why would I say that? I just ask Noah, he'll tell you. Just ask the millions of people that died. They can change, they can make you say anything you want. They, anything they want. Okay, so each agency has these people. So the bottom line is, is, is 
how it goes with you, even in a traffic stop, is based on what's really going on and who these people really are connected to. So you're not being represented correctly to the government if this person already has been chosen to push an agenda. And that's why you have to have every two years a different person representing you. And it has to be somebody that owns a business that lives down the street from you. Not somebody who's been there 47 years and has done nothing. Because that allows them to, de to develop the web of crime. The that, that causes the matrix to be formed. You want to keep transferring people around so that they don't get to where they have their gig going on. You, you want to mess them up. That's why the spirits don't want to be sent out of the area. Because you're messing with the whole matrix. Come on now. Why do you think the evil spirits don't want to be cast out of the area? Because they got, that's their peeps. They got them all hoodwinked. Each city, each town, each community, each state, each country. The bottom line is, is that the earth fell and we were locked out of certain dimensions now, but your dog can hear things you can't hear and, and um, your cat can see things that you can't see. So there's, there's, I mean, I've had it happen. I've been in houses where I knew there was an angel standing beside me. And the cat's staring at the angel. It was Andrew's da dad and mom's house. And the cat liked my angel better than me. <laughs> so, things are still going on, but we're locked out, right? Because we're fallen, right? Okay, so our eyes only see one-sixth of light now. So the rainbow colors is one-sixth in the pie chart. But there's all these other sensors now that have developed. Just That's what I'm trying to tell you. Science and the governments know what's going on. And they know how to negate gravity through electromagnetic fields, through high-frequency waves. I'm going to get in trouble. They can negate gravity. You can negate gravity. Not only that, you can take, you can take where you're at, and you can place, I can't say all that, I'm gonna get in trouble. I wish I had my chart. I, I chickened out, I didn't bring it. But this article, they took it away, but it's too late, I got it. But these men understand this. So the key to this is the next time that you see that big wing B-2 bomber. Oh, I had a grieving in my spirit. I'm not gonna have to, I'm not gonna be allowed to say all this. I'm not supposed to know all this stuff. So read Nick Cook's book. He wrote for Aviation Week and Space Technology. He talked to all these people. Nick Cook, it's called Zero Point. Discovering Zero Point, gravity, okay? Zero Point, which is where you negate what the forces are against you and then you just float. So that's why the earlier photos and the films of these UFOs that are wobbling, those are ours. But you know if you put a gyro in there big enough and it would spin, that would stabilize that. And so that later on, that's what they did. And now they're stable. But if you look, they're still kind of like turning a little bit. That's because inside, there's something going the opposite direction. There's residual. Is this too much? No. Okay, so you get the old ones. So you got the technology. Now, this is how I know this. Remember that, that, that uh, Blackbird SR-71? That was built. That was like, on, my, my professor flew that. He was the wing commander at Beale. And he said that was on a drawing board in the late 60s. But you know who developed that airplane? The CIA. It was the CIA's project. They had 12 of them. They, they were designated as the A-12, and it was out of Groom Lake, which doesn't exist. <laughs> now, all these people, guess, guess who these people were involved with? Lockheed, Martin, all these men that I can name that came over 
All these things were formed in these 40s. All of these agencies were formed after Roswell. And all that technology went black. What's happening now is people that have been part of this for all these years are realizing that it's going to be weaponized. It's going to be used as a weapon. Which means that when these crowd, like these crowd, these people that worked on these craft, they've, I, I, I mean, this isn't hearsay. You couldn't approach that craft. The field makes it weightless. And you can go anywhere you want if you have the coordinates. And you can go like that. And you won't feel a thing if you're inside. But if you're not inside of that, you cannot approach it. The field is too strong. Well, that's a weapon. Whoever has that technology has the earth because it's free energy. Somebody, not a professional minister, but Captain Kevin or, and, and Kathy and you all, just normal people that work for a living are going to stand up and say, listen, we know what's going on. The world has fallen and science has gotten a hold of all of these things and can manipulate it through a, 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 a high voltage. We can manipulate I mean, people do this in their garage. You should see the stuff that they, the films that were on YouTube where they've made stuff levitate in their garage and then they're dead. Their, their vacuum cleaner killed them. <laughs> I'm serious. There was strangulation by vacuum cleaner. <laughs> in our their death certificate. Okay. I'm serious. The guy goes three or four hours on a, on a gallon of water in an engine from LA and he disappeared. Okay, so at the, at the, last, at the last ten toes, the feet, you're going to have they trying to mingle with the seed of men. Is there anybody in here? I mean, it's, it's your King James. I mean, you know, it's your King James. <laughs> <It's right there. laughs> okay, so... Do you want to just go to heaven? Like, I, I went there, and I saw all this, and I'm like, man, we are messed up, and I didn't want to come back. I said, well, how am I going to ever, ever get a group of people to listen to me about reverse engineering and about um, high voltage and negating gravity and how you could just have access to anything? You know, or you can have open portals. Sir, you can just, you can just create a place where you can walk right through to the other realm. That's what these temples were. Why do you, what, what does it say in Hebrew about the Tower of Babel? It says the word there is not to reach the heavens. You couldn't build a tower high enough to reach the heavens. It was to access the heavens. So why did they take Nikola Tesla's all his stuff? Why, does, why did General Electric get it? The ones that confronted Jesus were the disembodied spirits from the people that lived before the flood. The angels that left their abode, the Nephilim, the fallen ones. Nephal means fallen. I am, I am is plural. Fallen ones are the angels that left their abode that Peter talks about. They're chained. So Jesus wasn't talking to chained angels. He was talking to unclean spirits, which is what everybody was before the flood, except for Noah and his family. So please, don't write me. What you're dealing with is a race of people that are out. They're disembodied, and they don't like you at all. And they don't want to leave the area they're in, and they don't want to go to torment yet, because their time is not yet. They have not been drugged to hell. Come on now. Jesus wasn't talking to fallen angels, and fallen angels can't inhabit you. Angels can't inhabit you. Angels don't procreate. Jesus said they don't. So if the serpent seed was able to get into man's seed and the woman and cause hybrids, 
so that the whole earth had to be destroyed except for eight people on a boat. That's a big thing, right? Okay, but you got to remember that something was on the boat, bacteria, that transferred over and the giants popped up on the other side of the flood. Okay, so, so all of you have to be smart to know that praying in the Spirit, you don't need a UFO. You don't need one of these anti-gravity crafts. You don't need, to, you know, you don't need to understand aliens. You might be the worst enemy to yourself. You might be the alien. You might be working against yourself, and that's what I know, is these evil spirits want you to work against yourself and work against each other. And that's what I'm called to stop. I don't need a UFO to travel. I can do it for free by praying in the Spirit. My spirit is placed on a higher dimension and I operate in other realms, which means I can hear and I can see and I can get things done in the future and I can make them my now. I can change the future. I can change it. And all of us can do that too, if we would agree. See, if we get together and agree, that was what was destroyed at Babel. God came down and destroyed their unity because he said, if we don't destroy their unity, there is nothing that they won't even imagine that they won't be able to do. In other words, they were going to do all that evil and it, and it couldn't be stopped. So God came down and stopped it. God came down and stopped it. He had to. Why? Because their, their belief system was wrong, but their unity was right. Okay, so what about now? The church. He worked, Satan works against our unity, but our belief system is right. So he knows if we get together and agree, there's nothing that we will not be able to do. Right? I mean, that's scripture, right? So this is the pure simplicity of the gospel. Is that Jesus came to seek and save those who were lost. He went around doing good and healing everyone that's oppressed the devil. He drove out devils. He preached good news. He raised the dead. It was no, it's no harder to cast out a devil than it is to raise the dead because neither one of them are you. I sense that what has happened in this room is at a higher level than most churches. Okay, but this is supposed to be the norm, which means that people should come in here and walk out healed. They yes. should be delivered not because of an individual, but because we all came together and agreed as touching one thing. That God was, it says that Jesus is in the midst if we are gathered together in his name, two or more, then he is in the midst. That is the sign, not the anointing of the individual or the gifting. See, the gifting and the anointings are for the body. We're to minister to each other. But it's not just the fivefold. If you notice... All the gifts of the Spirit are not for the fivefold. They're for the body. Each individual says, in the body, in a congregation, in a meeting, Paul said, everybody has a psalm, everybody has a word, everybody has a tongue, everyone. He doesn't even mention the pastor. Who was the pastor at Corinth? <laughs> Paul didn't even mention Right, he was talking to the congregation. He's saying, all of you have all these gifts in that. He said, severally as the Spirit wills. Okay, but let it be done in order. So two or three of you of each gift come up and then let everyone judge. It doesn't say the pastor or the prophet or your favorite televangelist. It doesn't say that. And Jesus never took an offering. But he obviously had enough because people were stealing out of it. And it still was enough, right? Even with the theft. But Judas was going to pay it back, just so you know. <laughs> My last word as far as status. If you want a word, if you want to know what the prophetic word is for the church, it's time to heat up. But... It's also this. The Lord said, you tell all the ministers 
to go back to work. Well, that went over well. Now I have no friends. <laughs> the reason he's saying that is because we were never supposed to leave the marketplace. Now, Paul and Peter, they were writing scripture. So it says, let's unload the apostles so that they can have time for study of the word of God and prayer. And then you got Stephen, who was not a fivefold, but when he would stand up and speak, they, they killed him because of the power. It says he had uncommon miracles coming from him. When he spoke, people grit their teeth. Paul ordered him to be killed, okay? But he was not a fivefold minister. I would rather be a table server and be known as Stephen than an apostle. I don't want to be locked up in a cave. I want to be out there with you beating the devil up. And how we beat the devil up is we look into each other's eyes and say, we're going to make it through this. We're going to make it through another day. I'll buy your meal today. You, I'm going to believe that tomorrow you can buy mine. Equality. All of us should be keeping each other so that we can be built up and supersede all these laws that are working against us. The supernatural doesn't have any limitations. It does not. It supersedes. It supersedes the natural. We haven't separated ourselves, so we're still lukewarm, which means we cannot operate in the spirit at the level we're supposed to operate at. Yes. Okay, so you can take care of things in prayer and change history and never leave your house, never have an offering. You can eat and have God move. Do you know that if God tells you not to give in an offering, it's just as important as you giving in an offering? Did you know that? Look at it. I'm going to start crying. Yeah, it's like, be set free. You, you love God anyway. You can't repay him. You're unhooking yourself from the world system by giving because you're giving that money to God and the devil can't have it. And the 10% protects the 90%, but nobody gets that. You got to be kidding me. 10%? You pay that every time you buy something. In state taxes, except if you live in Texas and Florida or wherever. You, you don't argue with a cashier about the 10% sales tax, but you'll argue with the tithe. And even Jesus said, give to Caesar what's Caesar's and to God what's God's in the New Testament. And you realize that tithing was not part of the law. Abraham tithed before the law. So tithing doesn't even count as that. The tithing was something else. It has to do with the tree. In the garden, that was the tithe. That was God's. The tithe in the garden was the tree. That was God's. It was never man's. The tithe is never yours. When you pray, you believe that you already receive it. Okay, because so, these guys have found that if you take a charge from where you're at and place it in a coordinate where you're going, it will suck you there immediately. And that's what these guys that worked on these craft told me. So when you pray, you believe you received it already, which means you go to that place and you take it. And you have it. It's, it's the certificate of ownership that is talked about in Hebrews. Faith is the substance of things, hoped for. It is the evidence, the word there is title deed, of things not seen. You have the title deed for it. You don't have to see it. You can buy a house and never see it. If you've got the deed for it, it's yours. When you pray, you obtain the title deed. Is there anybody understanding this? So this is what science has found that is highly technical. That's where you get remote viewing, project looking glass, all departments in the intelligent field. 
they can go. I mean, I know these people. They can go and return and say, this is what was on Putin's desk. Lester Summerall. He got a voodoo doctor, very popular one, saved, and then traveled with him. This is not hearsay. I heard him in person tell all this. This man could go to the White House, tell what's going on there, what's being said, and he said, in two days you'll see it in the paper, and it would be in the paper. He said, Hollywood stars, this lady named Madonna, would come, and I would get a spirit up in me, and I would do a dance, and I would sell it to her, and all of these people would come down there. An evil spirit would come in, and I would give them the moves to launch them, and the songs. Is there anybody here? Oh, and if you drink blood, man, you know, your albums will sell, too. Did you know that? Right? Okay, so they access the other realm, and the other, they, get, they all get help from the other realm. Right? But you're not supposed to access that through those modes, through astrology and, and, and uh, uh, obtaining, you know, through a witch, contacting the other realm. Right? You're not supposed to do that, right? But it is possible. You're just not allowed to do it. So you can travel. Before I was saved, I did it. I put that luggage away. I don't travel that way anymore. I started to shut down stuff when I started to sense it was a familiar spirit. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going through the gate. Amen. And if the gate ain't going, then I'm not going. And what happens is, is that stuff, you know, I, supernatural stuff happens to me a lot, but I don't talk about it anymore because they, everybody sensationalizes it, and then they say, well, I want that. It's like, well, I do too, but I've never asked for it. I've never asked for a visitation. I have stuff happen when I don't even believe for it. And that goes over well with the face circles, you know? Because the stuff that we have today, the stuff that's happened in Warrior Notes is not because of our faith. It's because we got out of the way. And access was granted once we stopped pushing. God wants to relay to you that your situation is in his hands now and that the, as the ministers of the Lord, these angels have come. They've come at the command of the Lord and they are going to take care of things. And so you're going to say this with me. Angels, angels go, forth go forth and accomplish the will of God, will of God in my life. Amen. But the angels have come to me and they said, oh, because we're here, you are in the center of God's will. And I go, wait, wait a minute. I want to be in this. I want to be, I want God's will. They said, you're in God's will right now because we were sent to you. I go, yeah, but like, I need like this job and I, and I, I need, you know, no, it doesn't work that way. We were sent to you. You are in the center of God's will right now. And, and, and that's the mentality that you have to start to get as a Christian is that you're not bound by the schedule, by your mortgage payment, by your chemo, by your crazy friends that come over or your relatives. You're not bound by any of that stuff. The angel of the Lord is with you. The spirit of God is with you. The word of God is with you. You're in the center of God's will because of that. And from there, you walk. You move about. You live and you move and you have your being in Him. 
Now look what's happening in here. You see, the thing it was is Jesus told me, you are the next move of God, Kevin, because I'm moving in you. He said, you tell the people they are the next move of God. Don't wait for it. You are. You are the next move of God. He said, you are a move of God because the Spirit of God is within you. And wherever you go, if you're with me and I'm with you, guess what? You can have what you want. It says, ask what you will. If you're in me and I'm in you, you can ask whatever you desire, it says, will, and it shall be done for you. Why? So that my Father would be glorified, right? And your joy would be full. 